Hello and welcome to another video from Strategic Energy Group. Today we're going to talk about occupancy sensors and hopefully clear up any misconceptions you may have as well as provide you with some useful information that you can incorporate into your energy saving program. There are six areas that I'll cover today. What are occupancy sensors and why do we use them? Sensing technology, mounting packages, power and communication, special features, and applications. First things first, what are occupancy sensors and why do we use them? Occupancy sensors are devices that sense when a person enters a room or a space. They are connected to the building's lighting directly or tied into a lighting control system and can even be used with HVAC systems. By using sensors, we can minimize the electricity usage by turning on equipment only when it is needed. Why do we use them? Well, there's two good reasons to use occupancy sensors. First reason, is energy savings. Using occupancy sensors can save approximately 25% of the electricity used just for lighting. The second reason is convenience. It's easy to forget to turn off the lights. What if your hands are full and you're in a hurry? Schedules can vary, so time clocks may not always be accurate in all situations, and this makes them a great option for HVAC applications. Now let's review the most common technologies for sensors. There are three types of sensors that are most often used in commercial buildings. The first is passive infrared. Passive infrared sensors react to the movement of heat emitted by people in motion. They detect motion within a coverage area that requires a line of sight, so they cannot see occupants behind obstacles such as furniture or even glass. Ultrasonic sensors emit an ultrasonic high frequency signal throughout a space and then monitor the frequency of the reflected signal. They interpret that change in frequency as motion. These sensors do not require a direct line of sight, making them ideal for applications such as public restrooms with multiple stalls. The third type is a combination of both, or dual technology. Dual tech sensors utilize two detection methods to increase the reliability in applications where a higher degree of detection is desirable, such as classrooms. Most manufacturers offer sensors that combine ultrasonic and passive infrared technologies combined. They activate only when both technologies detect the presence of people. Only one technology is needed to hold it on, however. There are several different methods of mounting sensors. First up, and most common, is the wall switch mounted sensor. These simply replace an existing light switch. They may not always offer the best line of sight, they're definitely the easiest to install. High wall and corner mount sensors provide a good line of sight for larger areas like warehouses and gymnasiums. Fixture mounted, these come as a package with the luminaire and it makes retrofitting easier because the sensor is already part of the light. Ceiling mounted sensors provide good coverage and a good line of sight. The last kind is a portable sensor used for smart power strips. And these are also great for vending machines and office cubicles. Let's talk a little bit about power and communication used for occupancy sensors. The first method is low voltage. Low voltage ceiling and wall sensors work with a power pack that converts AC to DC voltage and contains an internal relay. The sensor and the power pack connect with low voltage wiring. This allows the sensor to be installed anywhere in the ceiling grid and moved without disturbing the power lines. Low voltage sensors may also be networked together, and these are excellent for using with HVAC equipment. Next up is line voltage. Now line voltage sensors don't use a power pack, and they're suitable for applications where power pack installation is limited by a lack of space or access to junction boxes. Many only have the ability to switch a part of the load due to limits on how much power the sensor can safely handle. They are often used for individual luminaire control in applications such as warehouses or just for small loads. And lastly, wireless. Now wireless sensors have rapidly gained popularity, particularly for upgrades of existing lighting. Sensors and controllers communicate using a wireless method such as a dedicated radio frequency. 
The sensor can be installed anywhere within range and transmits to a controller, which is typically installed on or in a luminaire or maybe on a junction box, which then controls the load based on its algorithm. The sensor may be powered by an internal battery or even a solar cell. And these sensors can also be networked. All sensors have some sort of special feature that is particular to its brand or maybe just its style. A few bells and whistles that you'll commonly see on sensors are things like indicators and signals. Most sensors indicate motion is detected using an LED indicator light, and some sensors even emit a sound shortly before turning off. Passive infrared sensors require a line of sight to activate. Therefore, their field of view may be adjusted by using masking labels, blinders, or shutters. This allows, for example, a sensor to cover a private office, but not an adjacent hallway. This masking prevents the sensor from activating when someone walks past the office and the door is open. And lastly, the time delay is the amount of time after a lack of detection before the sensor is turned off. And sensitivity is the ability to detect motion at distance. These features may be adjusted at the sensor or remotely via laptop or tablet. If it's done at the sensor, this is usually accomplished using dip switches and sometimes an additional dial. Now that you know more about the hardware and features, we can talk about applying this knowledge to practical applications. These areas listed are well suited for the use of occupancy sensors. Lighting and HVAC are the most popular and provide good energy savings. HVAC applications allow you to use a sensor instead of relying on schedules and thermostat or building automation system. With a sensor, you never have to worry about setting up holiday or special event schedules. And good candidates for occupancy sensors are smaller spaces, enclosed spaces like an office or conference room, and spaces that operate on an unpredictable schedule or spaces that are intermittently occupied, that is, left unoccupied for two or more hours per day. Larger spaces like libraries or open offices with cubicles will need zoned or network sensors or maybe even individual sensors for each light. And remember, you can use ultrasonic sensors in areas that are screened by partitions or by furniture. They're not suitable for spaces where the ceiling height exceeds 14 feet. Passive infrared sensors are best in smaller spaces, but they need a clear line of sight. So position them so that the line of sight will not continue beyond doorways and that it's not obstructed. They're also not suitable for spaces where there are extremely low levels of occupant motion. For these areas, you want to use dual technology. Areas like lecture halls, testing areas, classrooms, things of that nature are good uses for the dual technology sensors. Try to remember these best practices when planning a new installation of sensors. Position matters. Position sensors above or close to the main areas of activity in a space. Avoid vents or heaters. Keep them at least six feet away. Never position a sensor behind a door. Mask. Mask the sensor lens to avoid false activation. Integrate. Integrate the sensors with existing lighting or HVAC controls. If you already have a control system in the building, you should take advantage of that capability and simply add your sensors to that system of control. Educate. Educate your occupants about the new devices and what to expect. Let them know where the sensors are located and how they're going to operate. I hope I've provided some insight and helpful hints for you to use occupancy sensors in your buildings and maybe even encouraged you to install one in your home. This concludes the presentation. Thank you for watching this video from SEG.